Hey guys, so earlier today I finally saw The Revenant. Um, I don't know why I didn't do a review earlier today. I kind of basically forgot. I got, got busy after I left the theater, had to do a few things, and for some reason I forgot to do my review until now. Um, apologize for that. Um, this is a movie that I was really, really, really looking forward to. It had me sold from the trailers, it had me sold from the story. I even, like I said, I read, I read, uh, background behind the true story of this film and <laughs> from just the true story I was sold on it I said if this story is as good as the this movie is as nearly even as good as the true story that's based off of this is gonna be a really good movie um, and it was also being you know given to uh, co very competent hands in Alejandro Gianertu a guy who just came off of Making Birdman, and that was a great movie, and won Best Picture last year, and also it looked like Leonardo DiCaprio was, you know, this was the movie that was going to finally get him the Oscar that, you know, he's been trying to get for like the past decade or so. Uh, me, me and my friends have been joking about that for forever, like, when the hell is this guy ever going to get his damn Oscar? He's been working his ass off for the last ten years to finally get it, and hopefully he will. Um... But, yeah, like, I have sold on the trailers, too. The trailers were some of the most intense trailers of 2015. Uh, they were amazing. If you have not seen the trailers for this thing, check them out. They're amazing. Um, and I was sold on it. <coughs> so, you know, and this movie's been getting glowing reviews, and it's, you know, going to probably be one of the top contenders for Best Picture. So... I even went out of my way to make sure not to do a top 10 list until I saw this movie. I knew this movie was not going to be released uh, in a, to get a wide release until January 8th. So because of that, I have pushed my top 10 list back a week. Um, so I can finally see this movie. And it also didn't help that I got sick. You know, I was so pissed. That, like, I had to wait this long to see it. <coughs> but I will say this. This movie was incredible. It was great. Um, halfway, about 30 minutes into this movie, I, I, I said this, my nerves were fucking shot because of how intense this movie movie. This movie is intense. It's insane. It's a roller coaster of a fucking ride. And I loved every fucking second of it. Uh, this movie was... It's a, it's, it's a, it's a rough sit. <laughs> this movie is a very, very rough sit. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, just get right off, let's just, uh, basically get this out of the way. Leonardo DiCaprio should win Best Picture, or Best Actor, apologize. Best Actor, he absolutely should. Um, if he doesn't, it's a fucking crime. You look at the competition he has in the list of other actors, uh, that are being nominated this year. Like, there's no competition. This... This role was insane. Great, he was great in this role. It's Hugh Glass, and one of the best things about this movie is that he rarely has any dialogue in this film. He does. He barely does, and he has to emote with his facial expressions. And because of that, you really, because of his acting in this movie, you feel his pain, you feel his anguish. You want to see this guy succeed, and. It's, you know, a lot of credit needs to be given to Leonardo DiCaprio because this was given to a different actor in a different, or, you know, the wrong actor. This could have been really bad, but he, his acting ability in this movie is incredible. And it shows how much he's matured as an actor. Um, like I said, he rarely has any dialogue in this movie. And, like, when he's in pain, you're in pain. Like, it's... A movie like his acting made me get so much into this film, um, and like get so emotionally invested in this. His character alone made me so emotionally invested in everything that was going on in this film. Um, also, while everybody's kind of talk about Leo and um, his acting in this movie, I don't think that's a, that's he should be the only one who gets an Oscar come uh, uh, awards awards time. And that is, the other actor, I think, is fucking Tom Hardy, who got an Oscar nomination, too, earlier this, today. 
And thank God, because Tom Hardy is one of the best parts of this damn movie. Tom Hardy deserves an Oscar. If it wasn't pretty much almost a guarantee that Stallone was going to win this, or win Best Supporting Actor, I would say right off the bat, fucking Tom Hardy should get this Oscar. Tom Hardy is one of the most despicable human beings in, uh, put on film in 2015. Uh, he is a really horrible person. But also, also at the same time, you kind of understand his motivations. Um, and that's one of those villains I really fucking love, is that like when you can understand their motivations, you can kind of see where they're coming from, to a point. When he's murdering fucking Leo DiCaprio's son, that's when you kind of draw the line, but... <laughs> he's he's like he's just a guy who wants to freaking get paid you know he, he's just in it for the money like most people probably are in that day and age and <laughs> he just sees Leo DiCaprio as a setback and he just wants to get his money and get paid for all the fur and everything that, that they have uh, caught and the pelts they have caught and um he does go a little too fucking extreme and to the point that you want to see this guy get his come up. It's really fucking bad. He's really good. Like, they did a pretty good transformation of him. Like, he has, like, I don't know, I forget what the story of his character is. Some, he had, like, some brain surgery or I don't know if it, either that or the, I might have missed this, but, I, like, he has, like, the scar on the top of his head where, like, hair is not growing. And so he has, like, this big giant bald spot. And he looks, he looks almost unrecognizable in parts of this movie like he is the transformation that he does in this movie is really amazing so is Leonardo DiCaprio too I would give him props on that especially towards the end of this movie um yeah it's like those two should get an Oscar also Domel Gleason, who um he's been a lot of goddamn things in the last year Good God, I, 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 how many movies have I seen him in, in the last year is baffling. Ex Machina, Star Wars, this. Um, what was the other one? I, just saw, I swear I just saw him in something else. Um, but he's really good in this too, like as the leader of this group. And uh, he, uh, like he's suspicious as to Tom, what Tom Hardy's really up to. And it's really, really good. I liked his... Especially towards the end, like, the scenes with him and Tom Hardy confronting each other are really good. Like, his acting was really solid. Um, what was that other kid? What was that one kid? Uh, I, I know I've seen him in the... There's another kid I've seen, like, a million t in a million movies. I forget what his name is. I'm looking it up real quick. Sorry. Um, stand by. Uh, I'm going to try to make this not a very long review, but... Will Poulter. Yeah, that's that kid. Uh, Will Poulter... What was, what was he in? Oh, he was in the uh, Weird Where the Millers and all that shit like that. Okay, it's that one kid from Where the Millers. He's really good in this movie as the guy that uh, tags along with Tom Hardy and um, Leonardo DiCaprio. And Tom Hardy saves his life and basically makes uh, this kid his basically a slave and makes him do what he says to do and even if it's fucking wrong, and it's really, his acting is really good in this movie, too, um, he was really good, was one of those kids that's like, I've seen that kid before, I couldn't remember, I put my finger on, like, who, what I've seen him in before, but he, yeah, he was really solid in that, too, um, cinematography, this movie should get, like, almost every award come over, uh, Oscars, um, cinematography, direction, picture, everything, the, the cinematography in this movie is amazing, like, I found out early, like, about a few weeks ago that this movie was made mostly natural light, and you can tell, it makes it even more effective, there are parts where they're, it's just lit by, um, the scenes are just, like, in complete darkness, but they're only lit by... Uh, torches that these actors are holding and it's really really effective and really well done really well shot really well made and it looks incredible um really really does and i like <laughs> if like i was like i was almost thinking i was like what other movie 
should get cinematography. I don't want to say Mad Max, but I think Mad Max should really get more visual effects, in my opinion. Um, that should be a, the, the award it gets. Um, but, you know, like, it almost is like a competition between those two and cinematography, because both are really good. And this is really good. And even fucking Hateful Eight, too, had great cinematography. Um, this was a really good year for cinematography. And this was just incredible. Like, there was small little touches I really fucking loved about this movie. There was parts where, like, when the actors are breathing really heavily and, like, there's fog coming out, or, like, there's uh, smoke coming out of, their, out of their mouths and, like, they're breathing really heavily and, you know, breathing in the frozen air. Like, it fogs up the camera lens. I'm not making up that it happens more than once, and that was really cool and really effective, uh, really well done. Um, I really like that little touch, and also like when blood splatters. There's parts where like blood splatters onto the camera in the at the very end of the movie, and it looks like there's this little drops of blood on the camera lens and shit like that. I kind of like that. It made it feel like you're right in the middle of this this horrible situation, like, right in the wilderness, it helped. Like, the cinematography, everything, like, it was really good. Um, now let's get into what a, a, a lot of people have been talking about. I would do, I, I, I can't talk about this movie without talking about what a lot of people have been talking about, and that is the violence in this thing. I was forewarned, uh, before I got, by, by, uh, numerous people that this movie was pretty graphic and violence and how uh, violent it, it, it was that it was a very very violent movie um well <laughs> I will say this I have seen worse absolutely I've seen worse uh, when it has come to like violent films but this movie is violence is pretty brutal <laughs> it is very very brutal um it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just checking something. Anyways, um, <laughs> does the violence in this movie really, like, uh, is really hard to watch? That bear scene, that scene alone, is one of the most. I, nothing can prepare for you, for, prepare you for that scene where he gets mauled by a bear. It is brutal. It is freaking brutal. One of the most intense, brutal scenes. It sets the tone for the rest of the goddamn movie. That was where my nerves fucking got shot. And it, there, this is how hard of a scene that scene is. It's the watch. At the end of the move, at the end of the scene where Leo, Leo uh, finally kills the bear. Spoiler alert. He kills the bear and he rolls downhill alongside the bear. The bear just lands right on top of him. The dead bear just lands right on top of him. There was a big giant audible fuck by everybody in the theater. That was pretty fucking hilarious. Um, I was one of them. I was like, that, like, like that scene was just, oh, that scene was. It's it's one of the scenes that what I liked about this movie the most is that a lot of the really horrible violence in this movie is more implied and not shown. Like, what... Like, just thinking about what this bear is doing to this guy's insides really, like, just terrify you. Like, you're sitting there like, oh my god. Like, and then, like, that in battle scene, that end scene where... That, that, the bear scene is probably the worst part of the movie. It is. Um... The it is probably the most violent. If you can get through that scene, you'll be all right. Um, even though, like the aftermath of what he looks like, uh, uh, his body looks like after being mauled by a bear is pretty graphic. Um, and there, there's parts where his skin's dying, and there's maggots and shit like that. That's pretty disgusting. But the other scene that was pretty rough to watch was, and this has been talked about too, is the in fight scene between him and Tom Hardy or just using axes, knives, chopping each other's fingers off, chopping limbs off, like just cutting each other like right and left and it's brutal, raw, it's oh, it's one of it's I, I think it was worse than the bear scene. Um it's one of 
the most raw f- like fights I've seen in, on film in like a long damn time. Uh, <coughs> the, viol- the violence in this movie didn't bother me as much as a lot of critics have. I know a lot of people were really bothered by it. Um, I've like I said, I've seen worse. And that's just should tell you like how much desensitized I am to it. Violence in films, but this. It was yeah. It 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 was, it was brutal. It, it's not for squeamish. I will tell you that. I had no problem with it. Um, also, this movie. I like that this movie is. One of the trickiest things about this movie was that. It alone, this movie could have just been a survival story, and it could have, and it would have been fine, and it would have been just been fine as that. Um, but also they add the revenge story part of it, which is interesting because if you actually do research in behind the whole true story that this movie is based off of, it is true that Hugh Glass got mauled by a bear, left for dead by his uh, fellow, uh, by like the character Tom Hardy's playing and all that stuff like that. He gets left for dead and everything like that. And he has, his weapons are taken away from him. He has to crawl across the wilderness, yada, yada, yada. What this, what isn't factual is the fact that, uh, what, what isn't true is that the whole part of the revenge story of this film is all made up. It is. It's from all accounts, from what I can tell, it's all made up. And that was one of the things I was worried about because it's like, this is a movie that, on, on its own, could be a great survival story, and that's it. It honestly doesn't seem like, like it needs a revenge flick, but because Tom Hardy was so great in it, and you like, you actually really, I, I actually gave a shit what happened on both ends. Like it was a great survival story. It was a great revenge story. It worked on both ends. I had no problem with them fabricating a lot of this stuff. Apparently, you know, they fabricated a lot of this stuff at the end, especially. Um, and it's the ending is kind of like one of those that's been left open for interpretation. I didn't really leave it. I, I didn't leave. Like, I, I think people are interpreting the ending a lot more than I did. But I was like, eh. I, like, I, I could see where, what both sides are saying about the ending. Uh, I'm trying not to get into spoilers, sorry. Um... Yeah, yeah. I would, as I, said, I would recommend this movie. It's a damn good movie. Um, it's one of the. It, it's easily the, one of the best films of the year. I gotta think about my top ten list now. I don't know where to like. This is definitely in the top contention for best film of the year. Um, I recommend it. Definitely do. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's a, like I said, it's a very hard sit, but it's well worth it, and it's. It's definitely a rough of a ride. Just like, uh, be ready to have your fucking nerve shot. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna get off here. Uh, I've been going on for about 18 minutes now, so I will be back to the next couple days with uh, 13 hours. The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. And until then, I'll talk to you later, guys later. Also, I didn't get any trailers. If you're wondering, so new trailers that I won't. I don't have anything to talk about with trailers, so see you guys in a couple days.